What's up, guys? Welcome back to the stream. We're going to try to get to 2075 again. Somebody made a comment yesterday. They said that was a weird live. And I think that about sums it up. It was kind of a weird live stream last time. So we'll see if this one's a little bit more normal. And we'll just play some chess and hopefully win some games. E4, D6. Okay, let's see. We're going to probably see Knight of Six here. D6. Okay. I'm going to, uh, we'll go bishop e3 and f3, and we'll see about, ah, oh, we're seeing this again. Interesting. So last time I think I did talk about how this is an actual line, and so we could try that just to mix it up, or we could do what we did last time, which worked pretty well also. Yeah, you know what? L let's try it. So this is a, this is a sacrifice. We were intentionally giving up the rook to get some counterplay along the dark squares. So if I remember what happened last time, I believe we take here next. And it's a fork, but it's not really a fork because they do have this move. But I think that was still playable. I'm trying to remember what the follow up was. It's gonna have to play Queen E6. And what did Stockfish say? I can't remember. Was it Bishop C4? I mean, that looks like a logical move. Bishop C4. You would force the knight to go there and you get a pin. That seems pretty good, right? Play some D4 games. Um, the problem with that is we're, we're already kind of at a level where I, I sort of need to play stuff that I'm familiar with or I'm probably just going to lose. That's the problem. Yeah, so he finds that move. What did Stockfish say? Oh, man. I wish I could remember what I looked at just yesterday. I have no idea. I don't remember what it was. Probably going to play this because that's the only move that looks like it makes sense to me. Knight to d5. And I could actually hold on. Hold on. If I go here, knight to d5, and I attack the knight, how does he defend it exactly? Oh, he would have to take here and then, okay, yeah, that's what I'm going to do, I think. That's what I'm going to do. We're going to go here. And then we're going to follow it up with queen to d4, attacking the knight. I think he does have this little tactic here, though, of takes, takes. There's a fork, right? So I would have to take this back. But we still have a relatively aggressive position, I would say. And I think it's still fine. Good morning, guys. Okay, he doesn't see the tactic and decides to just give me back the knight. So now I'm very happy because now I have two pieces for the rook, which is fantastic. Fantastic. So probably just going to take here with the tempo on the queen. And now it's extremely dangerous for black. Extremely dangerous. Ooh, I can even. Can I even play e6? So here's what you want to think about. On e6, why am I doing this? I want to open up the diagonal. The queen can't take. If the pawn takes, I jump in here. He's got rook there, though. So maybe I need to play this one first. If the rook moves, then e6 basically wins the game on the spot. So this, in effect, almost wins the rook. The only issue that I could see here happening is if he ignores it and play e, plays e6 because my queen is actually pinned here. So let's say I go here, e6 happens, I take the rook. He could take back and I'm still losing my bishop. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. So is there another way to make that work? Maybe I just need to just play this move, I guess. I, I thought there was maybe a more forcing thing, but e6 just looks... Although, hold on, hold on. Hold everything. What if I go here or here, sacrificing the bishop, and then I bring the queen in? Now that's a different story. That's a different story. Okay, so we do have something against e6, I believe. So what else is black going to do? If they move the rook, I talked about it. 
What else could they do? What else could they do? Am I missing anything? Am I missing anything? All right. That changes everything. Now I'm going to play it. I didn't see that move before, but now that I have a response to this, which looks very powerful, queen h4, queen f4, I am going to go this way. You can just take the rook. No, I don't want to take the rook. If, if he plays e6 and I take the rook. Oh, I see. I, maybe I do have a check here. I didn't see that. Yeah, I guess I could. But checkmate's better, so let's just go for the checkmate. But yeah, that's a good point. I, I missed queen c5, but I'm still going to do this instead. This way. Oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. I didn't even look at that. Thank you for saying that, whoever said that. Paul Grider, thank you. Hey, thanks, Ben. Thank you, guys. I didn't see that. Okay, he moves the rook, still going for the pin. But that doesn't really solve this problem, right? Because here we go, checkmate, attacks the queen. And there's no move that really saves both of those things. So, if I'm not mistaken, that should do it. Yeah, good game to our opponent. And... 84.69. Okay, so we did make a blunder. Let's see what the blunder was. We can learn something from this. Okay, so it just doesn't like my sacrifice. But I, like I said before, I, you know, I looked at this. It is playable, even though Stockfish doesn't really like it. Yeah, there we go. Now it adjusts. Sort of a long-term thing. Sometimes Stockfish struggles with those. We take. Okay. E5, okay, queen E6, bishop C4 is the best move. Okay, there was something wrong with queen D4. Oh, it was just what I said. He could just take here, and that's not the best way to do this, apparently. Because queen B6. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know what I would have played against that. Maybe something like this. I guess it's just not that good for me. Okay. So basically I'm supposed to leave the pin here and just develop because what when the pin is like this, there is no... Wait, there is still knight. Isn't this still a move? Hold on. What's going on? I'm still getting forked. Oh, because I have this move. And after black does something, I have this. Oh, look at that. Wow. And if you save this knight, your rook gets trapped. Oof. Stockfish is so tricky. Interesting. Okay. I'll have to remember that for next time. But after we got here, I think we probably put, yep, best move. And then, yeah, cool. All right. Next game. Thanks, Robert. Okay. What are we playing? Oh, D6 again. All right, let's go D4. And I think we played this last time, C3. Did, did this turn out well for us? I can't remember. I think it did, actually. I think, this, was this the game we played where we just.com crashed, but we were doing okay, I want to say? All right, so Bishop E7, very passive move. Uh, it does stop any Knight G5 ideas. I might just castle. Of course, I could take this, but I'm not super concerned because I do have the bishop coming here next. Yeah, let's go ahead and take it. We'll, we'll mix it up this time a little bit. And now we'll castle. I believe. Yep, let's go ahead and castle. All right. So how are we going to launch an attack is the question. Bishop 
Bishop g5. I could try to stop the bishop from going to g4 if I want. Or I could not worry about it and just play something like maybe queen b3. But then I have to worry about this idea. Yeah, this might be one of those situations where I do play h3. Only because it just seems like such a logical move for our opponent. I think I will. That's one of the kind of exceptions where I will slow down and play a move like that instead of developing. Okay, so he wants to play b5. Do I care about that or do I want to allow it? Of course, we can always stop it with a4. Yeah, why not? We'll try to take away some of the places the bishop's trying to go. See what black's going to do now. He can still play b6, but... Okay, they go for the knight. All right. I think I'm going to bring the bishop somewhere over here. You have to watch out for some tactics here, but I, I have the, the recapture, so we could go there. Should be E3 also looks good, though, because it controls some of these. Let's go to E3, I think, for right now. Okay, so do we want to trade? That's the question. Yeah, I think I'm okay trading because I see a nice follow-up move. I'm going to play queen b3. And what queen b3 does is, again, puts pressure, kind of takes away another option from black. So you can't go here, you can't go here, you can't go here. You can go there, but that's real passive. You can't move your rook because you have to defend. And I really, I'm really liking... What's happening next? The rooks are coming over. And, you know, this is under attack. There's a lot of things the black has to deal with. D6. Okay, I don't think that changes anything. I think I'm still going to go here. We do have a pin there. He plays B6. Okay. So... I'm thinking we just go here. I'm also thinking about playing f3. Now, f3 is a very committal move because it weakens the dark squares. So you have to watch out for that. But I'm planning ahead for this, and I really would like that to be more supported. That being said, um, I don't have to do that. I could, like, I could wait a move and do that later. Yeah, maybe I'll just wait one move, and I'll just go here first. And then after bishop b7, I'll, I probably will play. Yeah, I probably will go ahead and defend that. And I do have my bishop here kind of helping to control these dark squares. So I'm not super scared uh, as if this bishop was gone. Then I'd really have to be careful playing a move like this. Silence my phone for a minute here. Okay. What happens if I jump the knight in? I'm going to get a big trade. I don't want to trade too many pieces when I'm down a pawn, unless it really improves my position, which it does in a sense because it opens up the rooks, but I'm not sure if that's good enough. I might play bishop g5 and then try to jump in and take advantage of the pin. Not really worried about this. I can just tuck my king over here. Bishop's not doing a whole lot right now here. So let's go ahead. And now we're threatening to potentially go knight to d5 and i'm going to go back and if black wants to do this that's fine but they they have to be willing to weaken their king so i'm going to give them that option if they want to and i can simply retreat okay they are going to do it all right where do i want to go to question here is nice because it attacks the pawn it's not nice because i'm going to get chased around I don't want to get chased around, so I'm going to go all the way back. Okay. So now that the pawns are advanced, I'm thinking, can I take advantage of that somehow? Not immediately. I feel like my queen is not doing a whole lot at the moment. Maybe it is time to jump the knight in. Ah, actually, you know what? Look at this. Look at this square. Hmm, look at that. That might be a good plan. Really like my knight to be here, so I would have options to go to both places. Is that too slow? Rook up here and rook knight like this. This also gives me the option to double up. So maybe it's not too crazy, or I could even go here to double up. 
Okay. Hmm. Very interesting stuff. Yeah, let's... I am going to go here. And like I said, it's it's a multi-purpose move. I might want to double up at some point, but really I want to move my knight like this. And then I have options to go to both of these squares. This is the one I really want, but if for some reason that gets taken away, maybe I will change it up and bring the knight here. Let's go ahead and go back. Okay, wasn't expecting that. Um, I don't want to take with the bishop, obviously, but can I just take with the queen? He's going to sack here. Yeah, maybe I can't. Hmm. Interesting idea by our opponent. I guess it actually is, makes makes some sense, doesn't it? If I take, he wants to take here. What do I do? I have any good moves? I guess I don't really. Hmm. Maybe I have to go here now. I didn't really want to do that, but I guess I have to. Okay. So we'll take that way. I'm still. I'm still thinking about this square. I'm still thinking about that. I mean, look at that. It's just that's just such a nice square for my knight to be in. All right, we can pin that. And kind of stops me from doing what I'm trying to do, though. But also take it. Also take it and then pin this. That looks pretty good. Take it and jump the knight in. Huh. What to do, what to do. All right, we got to make a decision. Let's go ahead and take it. And let's try to take advantage of the king here. Plays f6 so quickly. Okay. Do we want to pin that? No, I really want to go for that square. I got to do this. Got to do this. Here we go. Well, that's the threat, and I'm probably going to follow up with rook f1 after the... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Takes. Check. Is that the best way to do it? Okay. Okay. Good game. Good game. Ooh, four mistakes. Yikes. Eighty-two, seventy-six. Okay, so we had some mistakes. Let's see what they were. Let's see what they were. So didn't like my gambit. Fine. What did it want me to do here? Queen b3. Ah, yeah, why didn't I think about that? Because how do you defend this? How do you defend that if you're black? You can't. Huh. Yep, pretty obvious. That's uh, that's, an, that's sad that I didn't see that. Can't defend it. Because if you go here, I, I'm taking this. I'm still taking that. Yeah, missed it. Missed that one. Oh, bishop c5. 
not even on my radar. Wow. Look at that. Pin and pin. Ooh. Fascinating. What a fascinating move. That's and it's good too because once you trade this off, you you have weak weak pawns to attack. Well, even at the cost of this. Oh my. And then you just Yeah, look at that. Bishop d5. And basically Stockfish is saying you've got a lot of weaknesses that you can now take advantage of. Interesting. Very interesting move. Bishop c5. Okay. Yeah, this was a difficult moment in the game to really know what to do. It said I could take this? And I was afraid of this one? Oh, you just ignore it. You go on the offensive. Let's say the queen just moves somewhere. Say the king just moves somewhere. It wants me to defend with my rook like that because of the... I mean... Wow, Stockfish is crazy sometimes. Okay. Our opponent was just playing way too fast here. This was a complicated position. They weren't even thinking, and then they just blundered to a basic little tactic. So, all right. Okie dokie. Let's go. Next game. Here we go. Doing some stretching. 2100. Yeah, Sicilian is basically what you see like all the time. So that's why I'm, I'm glad that I know my bishop b5 lines because it's pretty nice to have something that you're comfortable with. Ah, he goes for this. Okay, we're going to play bishop a4. And there is a setup that uh, usually happens in, in this type of game. We'll see if it happens here. a6 is what most people play because they want to trap your bishop like that. Noah's Ark trap. But I'm not going to let that happen because I'm going to trade here. So there's no more pawn to go on c4. So I can be fine. So we're going to go ahead and castle. b5, I'm going to go back. Probably going to play bishop here and I'm going to play d3. Yep. So what usually happens here, guys, is you get this pawn triangle, kind of like a London, except it's not on deep. Yep, he's attacking me, so I'm going to probably just defend that. And it's a really solid position. It's kind of hard for black to figure out how to break it down. And so here we here we go. Now, there's a couple of ways we do this. Number one is you move the queen over to e1. You come over this way. Another one is you play a4 to try to, uh, you know, do some stuff along this diagonal. I think I am going to start with a4 here. And... I mean, they don't have to do anything right now with it. They could just leave it. But if they, let's just say, take, then they're in trouble because of this. Okay, so he goes for bishop g7. That's probably fine. And I could even take and then maybe attack it with the knight. Or trade the rook first and then attack it with the knight. I think I will do that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Here we go. And how is... Black going to defend that. C6, I don't think you can do because I'm going to take here. And then I'll take it. Yeah, I remember looking at some lines a long time ago. There's some weird stuff that can happen over here if Black's not careful. He does go for Bishop C6. So... Yeah, I mean, I'm... Ooh. If I take that pawn and he takes and I take, I have a fork. He doesn't even have time. Yeah, that's got to be it. Got to be it. There you go. He doesn't have time to take this. I just want a pawn. And the, the queen side is obliterated. So, and black hasn't castled yet. So, uh, you know, you know, you can see there's, there's some serious threats here. So. Question is, can we take advantage of it before Black's able to play these two moves and get to safety? That's the question. Oh, 
Oh. Oh. Unexpected move by our opponent. Resigned on move 15. Yikes. Yikes. I mean, to be fair, they didn't have a good position, but that seems, seemed a bit early. Seemed a bit early. 91-84. Okay. No, that's not a bad move. I don't know why it's saying that that's not a bad move. I know that for a fact. Yeah. It's, it must be the depth isn't deep enough or something, because I know for a fact this is a good move. Anyway, can ignore that question mark. Okay. Same thing here. There's like almost no difference between these moves, according to the analysis. So it's, again, it's putting these questions when it's really like, fine. Okay. So it actually wants me to start this plan immediately with a4. Interesting. Okay. And what's the point? If they take, you're going to take here. You're going to take here. Oh, I have seen this line before. Queen h5. Yes. And what's the point? Well, the point is if they do this, you come over here with the check. And it's, it's a similar kind of thing. The, the queen side is all just messed up, and you're just piling on the threats. They play e6. You take here, and everything's kind of falling apart for black. It's a very bad position. you got to play f6. I mean, look at this. Oof. So I'm going to have to remember this one, because I think this is a mistake I've made before. I think I've, I've always played f3 here thinking I needed to defend. And in reality, I can just go for that right away. Also, taking is a line here. This one I don't think is as good for white. C4, yeah, this just doesn't look as good for white. But I did like this A4 one. did like that quite a bit. I can't really grab you. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. So in the game, we saw this. I still went for the same idea. It still turned out pretty nice, but we did it in a different way. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't really resignable. Game goes on, you play queen b7. If I take here, you can't take the bishop back because you get forked, but you can take the knight, and the game goes on. Yeah, you're down a pawn, but I mean, black's gonna have time to do this in castle, it looks like. So, okay, 245, thank you. 245. And Halloween Gambit, next game. Yes, we can try, but. They probably won't play it, but we can try. I'm going to stretch my legs real quick. Actually, I'm going to stand. Stand for this one. Okay, let's go for a... Too low. There we go. That's better. Let's go for the King's Indian here. Looks like we're facing a London. That's okay. You can play the King's Indian against the London. Okay, how do we want to set up this time? So we can't play e5 just yet, but I do want to prepare that. So let's go ahead with knight c6. And we're getting ready to do this soon. Uh, not quite ready. I might play queen here. And the reason I'm doing this is because if you think ahead, I am like I would like to play e5 and at some point f5 and try to, try to attack here. I probably want my rook to just stay here and, and be ready to go. And now my queen can be ready to go here. And so that's why I decided to use the queen instead of the rook. Because I'm, I'm planning to attack. Okay, d5. Interesting. So now it's going to get interesting. Because... I mean, really, I could still play e5. So here's the idea. I lose a knight. I get a bishop. I lose a pawn. I get a pawn. It's a big trade. Then I'm ready to attack here, which I, I do like. And it opens up this bishop. So that looks pretty nice. The e5... White could just move. 
then we have a fork. Again, if I lose this, it's okay. I'm still going to get another piece. Yeah, that looks pretty good, actually. E5. It's like a nice move here, I think. Oh, I forgot about en passant, but that's not a, I mean, that's not a big deal. I just take it, and that's still a pretty good position. So yeah, I think this is a good move. And of course, if the bishop just goes back, I don't have to go for the fork. I could also just move my knight. Now, I, I think I will do the fork, because unleashing this bishop usually is a good thing to do in the king's Indian. But yeah, even going here and then going with the normal plan of just throwing these pawns forward also looks pretty good. Sometimes, too, what you can do is go back to b8. And why would we go back to b8 after we just developed? Because once this pawn gets pushed forward, it opens up the c5 square. So we can go from b8 to either d7 or a6 and jump in here. And then if we get a5 in, you know, it's a nice outpost for our knight. So sometimes it's okay to do that in these types of openings. Okay, so we're going to get the trade. Here we go. And if he takes me, I'll take back, and I'm very happy with this position. Bishops activated. Bishops activated. Crisscrossing across the board. Uh, we have the bishop pair against the knight, so that's an advantage as well. And we now have pressure before the king gets castled. And if white tries to castle, we have to be willing to lose a pawn. So everything about this position looks amazing. Would this be the game for 2075? No, it's uh, six points if we win. Six points, so it'll be one short. Is it two? Oh, yeah, because the quick resign. Thanks. Forgot about that. Twenty seventy three. No, 2074. Six points. Okay. He's trying to defend everything. So what am I looking at? Well, I'm, I'm looking at this because we might have a tactic there. I'm looking at this. I'm, I mean, I'm looking at just taking and, and doing something like this, right, where the rook comes involved. I'm looking at this. Looking at the knight jumping somewhere. Probably got to take it. I think that's that's got to be the first move, I believe. And now, yeah, now we have the isolated pawn. So now knight g4 maybe is the way to go. How's white going to defend that? you could push nope but then you lose this guy ah uh, but there's the and that's interesting isn't it it's not quite that simple Could also just sink the knight in here and then if we get some trades then my queen is in a very active position and, and the bishop's unleashed rook b8 is an idea okay Ooh, bishop h6 i didn't think about that that's another way to attack it and why would I do that? Well, because, like I said, on knight g4, there's e4, and I don't know. Hmm. You can also jump the knight here. There's so many ways to play this. Oof. All right, let's start with the obvious. Just attack it. What's he going to do? He pushes it. Um. Hmm. Yeah, okay. So maybe I will play knight g4 and jump the knight in. I, I don't really know. I think that's maybe the best thing. I mean, we definitely have a long-term weakness, so that that's good. This is a long-term target, but I'm trying to find something, you know, easier to, to play right away. But Queen c6 to open up the square for a rook. Knight here takes takes, and then I have the pressure over there. Looks pretty good. I, this rook b1 move, though, is so annoying because my bishop's sitting here. I don't have to take it. Hmm. F, the problem with f5 is I allow white to trade off their weakness, so I don't really want to do that. I wish I could put my queen here, but I can't because the knight... Okay, we're going to go here. I don't know if that's the right decision, but I got to do something. So let's go ahead.
Also, my goat. My goat's good. Goat's good. I'm still coming up with a name for the goat, though. Any suggestions? The goat name? All right, so what do we have happening? He castles. So if I take, I already talked about it. I'm losing this guy. Oh, I'm not. I have a check. I have a check. So we could take the pawn. We can also just pile up. But I mean, it's a pawn, right? I should probably take it. I should probably take the pawn. In between move check here, and then we can save the bishop. Okay, he's trying he's trying to plan ahead, but I'm gonna probably still go there or save the bishop right away. Um now I could take two rooks, which is an interesting idea. Hmm. Two rooks for the queen. I mean I th I think the general consensus is the two rooks is maybe slightly better than the queen my concern i'll tell you my concern my concern is that my rooks are not well positioned so i'm going to need some time you know ideally one two maybe three moves to get like a battery created or to, at least two moves to get them on open files half open files white's queen's already pretty well positioned and i don't know what would happen so that's that's only the only thing also my queen is already kind of in a an annoying piece, especially if I were to, you know, plant it somewhere in the middle. That being said, uh, I might go for that. Let's do it. Let's do it. I think I will. Let's do it. We'll take the two rooks. And I'm going to look now for some, some good places to position my pieces. So this bishop's going to be very strong. I can just leave that sit here and it's never going to be able to be attacked, right? White has no way of getting to that bishop. So that's good. This one, you know, could be traded off. But also, like I said, I really want to focus on where can my rooks go. So I, I'm, if I'm thinking this looks good. Maybe this file. Okay, he's attacking that one. And I do have to watch out for some, some tricks here where I don't, you know, lose that bishop. So I'm thinking for right now, we just go all the way back also go here and relocate it here but then it might get attacked by the knight which i don't like so let's mm, yeah let's just go back and there's never going to be back rank problems because i can always play bishop f8 so i don't have to worry about that so now we can just focus on activating the rooks in a good way and go from there Okay, yep, expected something like that. Let's go ahead. Not only is it an open file, but it's also lining up on the queen and it's defending my bishop at the same time. So that seems like a good move. Now, the, the drawback, yes, is this pawn is weak. So I either sacrifice the pawn or I relocate this guy around here or play a6, I guess. Yeah, I think may as well use the bishop since I have it. Let's go ahead. We can put it over here and defend everything with the bishop. Okay, I think we're going to go back here. Now, if white really wants to, they can sacrifice the pawn to sort of make my bishop worse, but... I think I'm okay with that um, because that looks like it'll be a temporary thing. It looks like at some point in the future, if that happens, I'll be able to move, so, you know, either move this pawn up to let it out, or if I have to move this pawn up, you know, this way, uh, maybe at some point this. So I don't think it's going to be st stuck there forever. But temporarily, you know, why could do that? Okay, this one... So hold everything. I'm I'm wondering to myself, what happens if I take take line up here? Because that's checkmate if the bishop moves. It's checkmate if the bishop moves. 
So you would probably see this one. Then I could play like F, oh, F5 opens up this one, okay. No, it's not good enough. All right, so I don't want to do that. So I probably have to go to the corner then for now. Yep, we'll go to the corner. And it's still it's still doing what I needed to do. It's controlling the knight. Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm going to probably trade. Opposite color bishops, but we have the rooks on the board, so I think it's okay. Let's go ahead and trade. And now it's hard for white to attack anything. I mean, look at the position, right? White's not going to be able to attack anything as far as I can tell. Now, I still have to figure out a way to win the game, but this is where we start to see how the rooks can be pretty good. Let's go ahead and go here. I'd like to bring this rook over and maybe, you know, give myself options to start attacking more things. Could be a mating net here if we get the pawn up here. Bishop can come in and a rook can go to the back rank. That would be a checkmating idea. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Okay. Let's go ahead and go here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and play h5 because I, I do want to keep that idea in the back of my mind and just kind of keep an eye on it. I'm going to put my king on a dark square so I don't have to worry about checks from the bishop. Okay, I don't have to worry about that right now. Um, yeah, let's go ahead. And I can take my time. I don't have to rush because, I mean, what's white going to do, right? Everything is defended. That's the nice thing about games like this. You don't have to... It's very different, right? This is a very different type of, of game. You can take your time. You can slowly, like, move things around. You see Magnus play a lot of games like this, right? Positional games where he sort of maneuvers over many different moves, right? Kind of what we're doing here. We're just going to slowly but surely adjust our pieces and try to get them just how we want. I think I'm going to go here next. Um, although I don't, I don't have to. I mean, I don't know if that really changes much. Okay, he's trying to escape. And now I'm actually wondering... I'm actually wondering, do we have some sort of... Uh, can I sack the pawn? Bishop comes in. King goes there. I can't play f5 just yet, but I could throw this in, then f5. Hmm, it almost... Almost looks like I can. I don't want to get too caught up, though, in thinking too long, so maybe I won't do that. Let's just make a move here. And I'm going to come up with the other rook. I think, because I don't want to lose this guy, obviously. Let's see where he goes first, but I think I'm going to come up here with the other rook. Yeah, that's not a, that's not a problem, because I can go here. But I'm probably going to play it myself, and I'm, I'm going to go here. Yeah, this looks very dangerous for white. You're going to see the power here, especially because of the opposite color bishops, right? This bishop can't do anything to stop my bishop, so it's very dangerous for the king. And these pawns actually hurt white so much because the bishop it can't do anything, so there's no real chance for the queen and bishop to, to attack my king. So we're going to look, go h4 and play rook g3, and then grab this pawn and everything falls apart. Now, if white plays h4, I think I have to go here. But again, it looks like things are starting to fall apart for, for white. Well, there is g3, actually, and I, I would have to figure out a way. Maybe g5. Yeah, g5 would be what I would do, probably. Oh, he plays g4. Okay. Interesting idea. Let's go ahead and take that. Okay, okay. So we still got to figure out how to win the game. I mean, this is a weird plan, but it is a plan. I could double up the rooks to pile up on the pawn. The problem is he could defend. How do we actually win this? This is very interesting. I've never seen a position quite like this.
I, I think we need to use the bishop eventually here. It's got to be used to attack the king somehow. So maybe I go here and then try to bring it in like this. I, I, I want to keep an eye on this pawn, so maybe we position the rook here. Uh, but then, hmm. All right, hold on. Let's go here. And yeah, how do we do this? Do I double up here, bring the rook back, then the bishop comes into the game somehow? Maybe like that? This is, this is so funny. I don't actually know. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, let me do this. And the other thing, now that I mention it, is I could think about sacking because then I can start gobbling up some pawns. But that that's probably going to be harder to win. So I, let's try to avoid that if possible. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, let's do this. Now you can see I'm threatening to bring the bishop in. And now maybe we can launch an attack with our rooks and bishop on the king. Let's go check. Let's go here. If he goes there to defend, I'm going to move the bishop. Probably here. Because I might want to defend it. Yeah. So I'm threatening this guy first. I don't know how white deals with that. But even if they do, I could play c5. Get a nice... He doesn't... He does deal with it. Interesting choice. All right. So yeah, like I said, let's go ahead and play c5. Slowly but surely. And then I can think about going here and moving this rook somewhere. Okay. He... he uh, he took away the threat, so now I can do it and win the piece. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take this. Let's just check. Am I blundering something? I don't think so. I mean, just a pawn, but that's not a... No, he can't even take it. Nope. Nope, that's a fork. Yeah, good game. Very interesting game. Very interesting game. That end game was... F I don't... Like I said, I've never seen an end game like that before. Okay. So I didn't like that move. Yeah, we kind of talked about this. I had a very nice position here. Knight g4. Not the best move. What was the best move here? Oh. Oh. Stockfish says the best move was f5. See, and I talked about how I didn't want to allow white to trade off their weakness. But what, what's Stockfish's idea? You take back with the pawn... And what? And what? What are you going to do, Stockfish? You're going to put the queen over here? And and then what? And what are you going to do, Stockfish? You're going to bring your rook over? Okay. And then you're going to get a fork? I mean... Okay. Yeah, that's one of those lines that I'm, I'm probably not going to see in a game. Okay. So we did take it. Stockfish says no, you don't have to do that. It's it's a good move, but it said just the, the bishop was better. Okay, but we got an interesting game out of it, so I'm not, I don't regret that. Okay, so we took that, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, so there wasn't really any like major blunders or anything. It was just, this is kind of how the game went. And eventually, in the time pressure, it did get very tricky. Or white to defend here. Needed to play bishop f3 uh, to create the uh, sort of the boxing out the rooks. Yeah, okay. I don't know what I was going to do against that move. All right, good game. 2074, folks. 2074. You know what that means. You know what that means. One more game. One more game. Although, if I lose, it might, uh, 
it might start a streak of losses and we might end up playing for another three hours. So hopefully I'll win this one. I sit down for this, this hopefully the final game. All right, last time. Hmm. Uh, sorry, I'm just adjusting this. Last time somebody had recommended Stafford Gambit, so let's let's try it. Although I have to tell you guys, this is not an opening that I play regularly. Okay, we're we're not going to see it. Never mind. Halloween Gambit. Huh? 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 Is our opponent going to? No, they're not. So sad. I don't know this line at all. I guess we just take it. Usually, you take that pawn when you're playing these E4 openings. Let's play bishop b4, try to get some pressure going here. I don't want to allow my king to get moved over like that, so that's why I'm taking this way. It looks like we can win a pawn, but really this is such a terrible pawn to take because this, and then also my king is here, and so what I'm going to do instead is just castle. Yeah, I'm just going to castle. Get the king out of the center. Now we can use the rook and do stuff like that. Also play d5 maybe here. Interesting. Yeah, let's play d5. Let's let's get a pawn in the center and also let my bishop out. And if they push by, uh, because the king is still there, I can simply bring the rook over. And yeah, how does white deal with this? I mean, f4 I guess you could play, but that seems very... Committal, opening up these diagonals, especially when you're about to castle that way. And they do it. Okay. So I'm going to keep an eye on these moves here. Hey, thanks, Fisher. Appreciate you. So even now, maybe knight g4 or bishop g4. Hmm. Trying to make the queen move to an awkward square. Yeah, uh, that's... Hmm. I like this one because it threatens queen h4 right away. I like this one because unless white's going to just go back, which they could, they could just go back actually. Yeah, all right, let's do this. Let's do this. So here we go. This is the, this is the big threat. And it's not a super easy threat to deal with because if you castle, I'm still going to go there and it, it's threatening checkmate probably. And also this is a problem. Oh, oh. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. You can't do that. You can't do that. Nope. Nope. You can't do it. Check. This is what I'm talking about, right? We saw the diagonals, and now we're taking advantage of them. The knight's coming in here. Ooh, wait a second. Wait a second. I think I have a better move. Okay, here you go. Hear me out. Hear me out. Queen g3 threatens checkmate. Okay, you with me? How does white stop that? Oh, they take my knight. Then I go back here, and that's checkmate. Huh? Huh? And you can't take with the queen because of the bishop. Oof. Oof. Good game to end on. Good game to end on. Nice, nice little idea there. Yeah, that was that was tough for the opponent for sure. Nice move, right? Yeah, it's unstoppable because this is immediately checkmate. So you literally either have to defend the square or take the knight. And then this is also immediately checkmate. Amazing. But it, it, I mean, it goes to show you got to be careful um, opening up. Here's the thing. There are openings, okay, where you, you move the F pawn and you can safely do it. In those openings, though, black is not set up to immediately make you pay for it. But if they are, like in this game, you, you just can't do it. And that's what happened. That's what we saw. All right, let's check the uh, game review here.
Okay, 90. Let's put the eval bar on. So there was a, a little mistake in there, maybe. But I didn't know the opening. I was just trying to play regular moves. Okay. Rook e8 wasn't good. What? Oh, it wants me to play knight g4 right here, even, even this early. Okay, but rook e8 is very good, too. Rook e8 is also a really good move. Yep, knight g4 was the best move. Bishop g4 was okay, too, for the idea I mentioned, forcing the queen either to move to an awkward square or the bishop comes back. But yeah, knight g4, so like I said, here's the thing. You know, when you play f4, there's a couple things you want to keep in mind. Do you have your knight on f3 to follow up? Because the knight on f3 controls this, controls this, controls all these dark squares. It helps defend. White doesn't have that. Do you have, uh, you know, a bishop on e3 to help kind of control that you can maybe use? No, the bishop's over here. What about black's pieces? Does black have pieces to take advantage of these diagonals? Well, actually, I'm like perfectly positioned to do that. The knight can jump in. There's nothing stopping it. It's already defended, which immediately threatens the queen. And also, this diagonal is immediately open to me from the bishop. So I have three pieces that are just immediately ready to attack those weaknesses. So that's why this is so risky. Now, that being said, Stockfish says it's the best move, which which means there was a way for white to defend after that that they just didn't didn't see. And it probably has to do with castling, because that was really where I felt like it was, yeah, because of the queen h4 being so strong. So what was white's option? Let's see, queen f3, right? So you bring the queen over to help defend some of those weaknesses. So now if I play queen h4, you can simply play g3. And the queen's defending the rook, and, and you're surviving here, okay? So I would have had to come up with something else. Bishop c5 apparently is the best move. And then what would white have to do? Knight to d1. So again, you're maneuvering your pieces to defend those weaknesses, right? So that's what white needed to do. Okay. They didn't see that. Castled. And then we had the beautiful little finish here. So it's not a forced checkmate. Um, oh, even here, queen g3. Oh. Even here, I could have played queen g3. Same idea, is that I'm going to follow up next move with that. Wow. Okay, but I did this first and then went here. And wait a sec, wait a second, wait a second. Stockfish says it's only minus 1.6 because of the queen sacrifice? Oh my. Oh my, Stockfish says bishop e1? Is the queen getting trapped? Queen e3, h takes g... How is this not... I am so confused. Now it says rook takes e5. Like, what is going on? Is it just saying that you get two pieces for the queen, so that's why it's not so bad? That's what it's saying. You get two p. Oh, you just get two pieces for the queen. And the game goes on. Interesting. So even though white, okay. It makes sense, I guess. I thought my queen was getting trapped, but it's not. No, you can't take it. You have to play bishop e1. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Stockfish is crazy. But anyway, there's the checkmate. You got to take it. If you take this way, we saw what happened. And so that's it. All right, guys, I have a video for you guys to watch next. I'm going to link it in just a second here when I end the stream so you can go watch that. But first, I'll, I'll answer like any questions, any burning questions. Let me read some chat here. I haven't really read much chat. Nice win. Thanks. Hey, Harry, how you doing? They probably could have sacrificed the queen. Yeah, you said it. You're right. You're absolutely right. 2079. All right. Yes. Goat's name is Carl. <laughs> All right. Carl the goat. Three years ago, I had more hair. Yeah. I mean, I don't doubt that. Thanks for reminding me. Not really. <laughs> Basically got the Stafford Gambit, Gambit Trap from a different move order. Okay. I'll take that. All right. I'm going to post a video. I'm going to link it to you guys so you can be the first ones to watch it. Okay, so hold on. Let me...
I'll grab it here. All right, copying the video link. And I'm about to post it. This is a, this is going to be a good video. Okay, this is going to be a good video if you uh, if you want to know what to do against the Scandinavian. Okay, so real quick, I'll just show you guys. Uh, if you're not sure what to play against this, you're gonna go. You're gonna want to watch the video. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna post it right now. Hold on. Public. Here's the link for you guys. Ready? Ready? Publish. Here you go. That's the video. All right, go watch that. Thank you, guys. You know, like it. Watch it all the way through, all the stuff. Thanks. Appreciate everybody. Take it easy. Update the wins. I'll do that real fast. Okay. See you guys. Stay sharp.